We've been grafting plants now for about eight years, mainly to produce grafted plants for our research trials in which we evaluate root stocks, fertility, and other cultural aspects of utilization of grafted plants. Over the years, we've done this in a number of different ways, uh, but I'm now going to describe how we're doing it currently, although I'm sure it'll change in another couple years as we continue to learn more about propagating grafted plants. This is our finished product here. This is a grafted plant, uh, and you can see that this plant is about five weeks old. So it spent about three weeks growing, uh, and then it was grafted, and uh, spent about nine days in the healing chamber, and this is about a week after that. So this plant is about 35 days old. The first thing that we do is we sow our seeds into seedling trays. And I get a lot of questions as to whether or not we should seed into seedling trays or if we should use direct sown into plug trays. For many commercial tomato transplant growers, they will just direct sow the seeds into plug trays. And for non-grafted plants, this is a very good system. However, for growing grafted plants, it's important to keep in mind that we want a very uniform crop, both with our rootstock and our scion, and among the rootstocks and the scion, in order to make the grafting process more simple and faster. For that reason, we typically will sow into seedling trays and then transplant the emerged seedlings about seven to 10 days afterwards. We typically transplant into a 50 cell plug tray, although I've seen people use 72 plug cell plug trays and those also work very well. After transplanting, they'll grow for about two weeks in our grow house and then we'll actually carry out the grafting procedure. Now the grafting procedure doesn't take very long. We can typically graft about 200 to 250 plants per hour. So we can typically knock out a batch of about 800 to 1,000 plants in about half of a day if there's a couple of folks working on it. After that, they spend time in the healing chamber, and then they get moved back into our grow chamber in order to introduce them to full sun and get them growing again with their tender graft unions. We want to make sure that the plants spend about seven days in our grow chamber where they get full sun and get a lot of good growth on them before moving them out to the field or moving them into a hardening chamber. And at that point, we'll go ahead and move them into a cool room where we can harden them off for another seven days before planting. The basic components of what you're going to need to be able to graft tomatoes uh, are a few different things. If you have a greenhouse, that's going to be a very important piece of equipment on the farm for growing your own grafted transplants. You don't necessarily have to have an expensive greenhouse, but it does need to be one that you can control the climate very well and, and also spend a fair amount of time working with the plants. Now, when we actually graft the plants, we'll put them into a healing chamber where we raise the humidity and cut down the light. But one of the difficulties is that that healing chamber can heat up very quickly. And so the placement of this healing chamber is very important. There are some people that will graft plants and put them into healing chambers that are indoors. For example, you can build a healing chamber inside of a walk-in cooler, and during the off-season, this can be a great use for a walk-in cooler. Uh, or you could put one just in a heated shop or garage area as well. So some of the tools that you're going to need to be able to graft uh, are mainly just a few basic things. Uh, in order to build a healing chamber, we can do this out of materials that come from the lumber store or farm supply store. But you will need grafting clips, which are specific for tomatoes. Typically, we use a silicon clip that's a 2.0 millimeter. However, they also sell 1.5 millimeter clips as well. And we tend to keep some of those on hand for the smaller ones when it comes time to grafting. You also want to have a good sharp knife, like a scalpel or a hobby knife. Uh, oftentimes you can buy these at hardware stores or hobby supply stores they use for matting picture frames. Now the plants are the appropriate size for grafting for a very short while. And one of the big challenges of grafting your own plants is the appropriate size for grafting is very specific and it's very important that you keep a very close eye on those plants in order to catch them at the right time for grafting. When we graft, you want to find a nice shaded working area in order to keep the sun and the stress off of the plants. It's also a good idea to take the plants out of the greenhouse and put them into a head house or a shaded area prior to the grafting in order to slow down that water stress that's on the plant. Or oftentimes we actually do the grafting at night as well, and that, that works very well too. When you're actually conducting the grafting, basically what you have to do is just cut the plants in half and put them back together. It's really that simple. Now we like to put our cut angle about below the cotyledon leaves of the rootstock, and it is important to do this. If you put the graft union above the cotyledon leaves of the rootstock, 
then you can have problems with suckers that shoot up later from the rootstock and rob energy from the plant. So we cut the rootstock plant at about a 75 degree angle below the cotyledon, and then we want to cut the scion uh, plant at the same angle, and it doesn't necessarily matter if it's below or above the cotyledon. Oftentimes we will do it below just to make it match up better. Now when you're actually grafting them together, you basically cut the rootstock plant, and then you put a silicon clip over the stem of the rootstock, and then insert the scion into that silicon clip. And you want to make sure that those angles match up very, very well, and you don't have any gaps at the top or the bottom. If you have plants that are mismatched, sometimes it helps to sharpen the angle a little bit in order to increase that surface area between those vascular tissues. Once we've actually grafted them, you want to quickly move them into the healing chamber. We typically will graft a tray of plants, or about 50 plants, to, and then move them into the chamber. But if it's a cloudy day, or if you're in a nice working area, you can graft as many as probably 100 to 200 before actually moving them in. But you'll notice very quickly that they'll start to wilt and droop after you've grafted them. You want to very carefully put these into the healing chamber and stack them in there pretty good. One of the things that we found out over the years is that a very large healing chamber with a small number of plants in it will not maintain good humid conditions. So you want to have an appropriately sized chamber that's about the same square footage as the grafted plants at the end of the day. And you'll notice that especially if you increase the humidity in the chamber with the humidifier, the plants will quickly recover and will become turgid.